Hello, this is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. Today is Sunday, October 29th, 2006. Let's go ahead and take a look at some stocks for trading this week. Now, the market seems like maybe it's uh, going to start a little digestive phase. Let's see if uh, Friday's selling turns into anything um, more significant. It's, uh, it's tough to say. The market is definitely extended, and we've got those semiconductors breaking down. I've got the cues on the screen right now. Um, but I think that... <clears throat> a little more weakness in the queues down to 4160 would not be unexpected at all. We really have to keep an eye on these semiconductors, particularly below $33 a share. But I do still think that, uh, as always, it's a stock picker's environment, and there's going to be good stock opportunities to trade as well. So let's start out by taking a look at Aris Group, symbol ARRS. Their earnings have already been released. I'm, I'm not sure if that was on this day. I didn't check that carefully, but I did see the route, so we don't have, we've got that behind us, the event risk basically behind us. Now, this stock broke out on big volume. First, we had a nice volume move here when the stock was able to get back above its 10, 20, 50, and 200-day moving averages. Then it consolidated on light volume down uh, you know, over the last week and a half until last uh, Thursday, we had a nice big volume event where the stock broke out again. Now, looking at a 10-minute time frame, you can see that we had a nice little consolidation here. And basically, what I'd be looking for is for the stock to move above uh, $13.55. Once it can get above $13.55, I would consider this as a potential uh, purchase, you know, if the overall environment, uh, the, the overall, you know, market environment is uh, warrants it. But I think getting above there, we could see a return of upside momentum. Uh, I would probably put my stop below this low right here. So I'd put my stop at about $13.24. And looking for an upside target, we'd have to go back a little bit further in time. You see on the weekly time frame that, you know, the recent highs, or the highs this year, are about 14 and a half, $14.35. And taking it back a little bit further in time, you see these 2001 highs up near uh, fifteen seventy. And then if we back it up even further to go, let's go out to 100 months, we can see this, uh, you know, that's that's where that uh, level I just drew in was. But we've got, you know, a stock that looks like it's setting up nicer even on a longer term picture. So we'll just le use a target of about 14 and a half to $15 a share and risk at about $13.24. Monster.com also reported earnings. I don't know which day that was, whether it was on this little gap higher or this little uh, sell off. But when we look at the daily time frame, it was up, you know, on, on big vo on increasing volume. And this, you know, decline has come on diminishing volume. So we're, we're starting to see now that the 10-day moving average is above the 20, which is above the 50. And the stock looks like it could reasonably, you know, make a run for that maybe $43 level or so. Uh, as far as where I would buy the stock, I would say that it, you'd have to see it get back above uh, about $40.70, the uh, afternoon high from Friday, um, right in there. So I, 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 I consider this as a purchase candidate above $40.70 and, of course, not on a gap above there. But I like to see it trade up to that level and then punch through. Uh, once I was in it, I would put my stop at about $40.24. And again, I think 43 or so looks uh, reasonable for MNSTMonster.com. Uh, T-E-L-K. This is a company called Telic Incorporated. You can see we had increasing volume over here, decreasing volume on the pullback. And it, it broke below the 10-day moving average. But again, we don't buy support at 10-day moving averages. The 10-day moving average is just an inflection point, an area for us to get interested in looking at it on a closer scale. We'll do that in a moment. Let's first take a look at the weekly time frame and then even go back to a monthly time frame. So you can see that, you know, maybe it's it's uh, realistically got resistance up near about that $22 level, and I wouldn't even make that the target for now. In fact, for now, I would say a target on this stock would be up near about $21 a share, and that's just based on the measured move here, a, a conservative look at the measured move. And as far as buying the stock, I think you need to see it get back above $19.60. Take out these highs in that five-day moving average. So above $19.60, I'd look to purchase this stock. And I think your stop could then go at about $19.35. 
So your risk in that case would be about 25 cents a share uh, and looking forward to move up to about 11, uh, $21. Earnings are due on this company on November 6th. So I think that we can see that move potentially develop before we have any risk of earnings coming out and messing our play up. Connor Medical Systems, C-O-N-R is the symbol here. I've got one small stock as well that I'm going to mention at the end of this video, so stick around for that if you're not interested in short sales. But Connor Medical, C-O-N-R, has been, you know, I broke this uptrend line here, and it's been kind of struggling. The 200-day moving average is flattening out. Looking at a daily time frame, uh, you know, the stock looks like it's it's having some trouble in here. It's kind of, you know, making a little bit of a, a triangle, you could, you could say. Um, but because we have a declining 50-day moving average, I consider the stock guilty till proven innocent, and I think it's more likely to break down than it is to move higher. Of course, if it does move higher, that's what we're going to have a stop in place for. So here's how I think we ought to look to play this stock, or the way I'm looking to play it, rather. Uh, I'd like to see it rally up to about $20.60. Once it does that, I'd like to, I'm sorry, $24.60. Once it does that, I would sell some weakness below $24.45. $24 so first I want to see a little bit of a rally to, to work off this, you know, quick sell-off we saw from Friday afternoon. A, a rally up towards $24.60 and sell it short. As the buyer sellers, you know, regain control below twenty-four dollars and forty-five cents, a stop. I think you could put around that five-day moving average at about twenty-four eighty-eight or so. And as far as a downward target, I think you can look for uh, at least a test of the twenty-three dollar level, um, which would bring it down towards a, about here. And you know, looking at a, a bigger picture, this is you know something that could turn into a nice little disaster. Um, earnings are due out November seventh on C-O-N-R. We tried Ceridine on Friday, symbol C-R-D-N, and I had suggested a stop that was just basically above this level here, and we'd entered our short on some weakness and got stopped out on that. However, I still think the stock looks like it's due for a nice cave-in. Now, earnings are due Wednesday morning, November 1st at 11 a.m., according to the information I'm looking at. Double-check all this earnings information because I can't guarantee whether it's accurate or not, and, and I don't, you know, don't want to see anyone get blindsided by an earnings report. The best case, you know, if you're really unsure, is to call the company. You can get their number at Yahoo Finance. But this stock looks like it's breaking down. The 200-day moving average is declining. So that tells me institutional money is leaving this stock. <clears throat> and on the daily time frame, clearly we can see the 50-day moving average is heading lower. And we've got lower highs and lower lows. So what I'd like to see happen in here is a, a rally because it, it sold off hard in the afternoon on Friday. I'd like to see it rally up to about 41.20. And then I would sell the stock short below 41.05. And stop, you know, I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm going to leave it up to you because I tend to set them too tight on these short sales. So you're on your own as far as the short sale goes. But I think this looks like a great candidate for a drop down towards, you know, under $40 certainly. But down towards probably 39 bucks a share. And who knows, this thing could really pick up if, if it gets some kind of uh, fear built into it. Two stocks, actually, two small cap stocks. This ADSX came up uh, last week right to that 200-day moving average. It's consolidated on diminishing volume in here. And I think that, you know, you might be able to see some momentum return into it above about $2.30. I definitely wouldn't risk more than a dime on this thing, and, and maybe it gets going back up towards that $2.80 level. The other stock that I would look at and consider as a long side uh, purchase is this one right here. The stock closed at two dollars and eight cents on Friday. You can see that the big volume recently. I think it's got a shot to make it up towards this 200-day moving average at about two dollars and forty-five cents. And looking at a weekly time frame, you can see that you know clearly the stock has had problems, but we're getting volume coming back into it, and a lot of these little stocks have been a acting favorably. The way I think to play this stock is to buy it at two dollars and ten cents above 209. In other words, I would buy it at 210. That's my plan. Now, I would definitely uh, not hold it below $2 a share, so maybe risking a dime and looking for about $0.35 cents of upside for uh, microvision, symbol MVIS.